Uh, so in this video, we're going to continue uh, building our Node.js Express app uh, for doing certain operations with PDF, like invoice generation, uh, conversion from HTML to PDF, conversion from Office documents to PDF. Um, so last time we left off uh, specifically around just setting up our Express app running on the port 4000. And if we navigate to our browser, um, it still displays that we cannot get the path. So let's actually go ahead and implement kind of the default endpoint. And to do that, uh, we're just going to say app.get. And now app.get is what your browser is making uh, a request. Uh, to that specific, it makes a get uh, request. And then inside of it, um, we first need to kind of give it a default path. So uh, we're going to put a slash. And then here, uh, we're going to have a callback function that's going to be called every time somebody tries to get uh, this specific path on our server. And actually, the two uh, parameters uh, that we get in our function that gets called is a request and response. Now, uh, we can actually send back the response uh, to it. So we can say res.status and uh, give it status of 200. And then after that, let's send back some JSON with uh, status success and then data of hello from the server. Okay. Okay, and let's see how this behaves now. So if we refresh this now, ah, great. So we actually get our state of success data all from the server. So now what we're gonna do is actually try to get uh, some information uh, from the client uh, to the server that later we're gonna use for our endpoint. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're gonna be using the query parameters. Uh, so let's take a look here. So in query parameters, we can actually specify uh, for example, um, amount or price, and now those could be whatever variables that we want, and we can kind of chain them together with the uh, percent. Now, kind of to see those reflect here, they're actually stored on the um, our request object. So this is what's coming from the client, and they're available under request that query. So uh, we're gonna see the console printout uh, the next time I make this request. Aha, uh -huh, perfect. So we get those variables uh, from Node.js or fr from this request. Uh, so we can use them in our Node.js logic here. So for example, here, uh, let's add another endpoint and it's gonna be accessible under uh, generate uh, invoice. And it's gonna be uh, using request and response. And now what we want to do is actually set up another endpoint uh, and let's call it uh, convert uh, from office. And then here we're going to get rec, res, same thing. Perfect. So now we have two endpoints, one for generating invoices and one for convert from office. Uh, to PDF. Now, um, before I continue, let's take a look what actually we're going to try to do. So I have prepared a kind of this sales quote right here uh, that uh, we're going to use as a template. Now, I just put this template together uh, using Google Docs. Um, however, you know, you can uh, generate it with the HTML if you have existing HTML uh, or use Office document. And uh, the important part here is that I created those kind of placeholders, for example, for the quote number where it's gonna go uh, with the square brackets and then quote numbers, uh, customer name, address line one, two, item one, item one, quantity item one, price item one, total, total date and expiry date. Now you can customize those as much as you want. However, uh, the really important part is that this is where we're gonna be replacing the strings uh, inside of it to with an actual information that we're gonna get from our client when they're gonna call the endpoint. Now let's get back to our code. 
So inside of here, I created kind of placeholders for generating the invoice and converting from Office. Uh, so we're gonna first save off uh, the kind of the Office template in Office format, and then we're gonna convert it to PDF using PDF Net Library, and then we're gonna pre-populate it uh, with the data that we're gonna receive from generate invoice uh, endpoint. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and save that. I'm just going to download it. Alternatively, I could just use, uh, just download this as a PDF, but I actually want to kind of keep it as a docx so I can edit it later on if needed. Inside of my folder, I'm actually going to create a new folder and we're going to call it uh, files. And this is where I'm going to be placing any of the files that I'm working with. So let's go ahead and drop our sales quote and place it under files. Let's actually go ahead and implement uh, convert from office endpoint. Now here, you know, the way I'm imagining uh, this endpoint is going to be called is something like this, where the user is going to go to local host 4000, or, you know, our React client app is going to make a call to the endpoint uh, convert from office. And then after that, we're going to actually give it the file name of salesquote.docx. Uh, now to do that, uh, we can actually extract the file name, uh, very similar how we've done it on um, kind of our first endpoint with a rec that query. Uh, so let's go ahead and implement that. So I can use a bit of ES6 syntax to destructure the file name uh, from our uh, request and it's available in the rec query. And then here, what I wanna do is kind of configure uh, input path and output path uh, for input path where our source document is, is going to be docx, and then output path is going to be the PDF that we converted. Now the input path, we actually would need a built-in node module called path to make this app run across, you know, uh, run on Linux server, uh, Mac OS, or Windows server. So to do that, we can just require it and uh, call it path. Great. And then, yeah, perfect. So here we can actually go ahead and resolve the path of our directory that we're in and um, where the file is going to be uh, placed. Now I'm going to use, again, template string, and I'm going to use the uh, back text to indicate. So within the same directory of index.js, you want to go to files. And then after that, um, the query variable, and we're going to use the file name uh, of um, kind of the file name that's going to come in from the request. And then the output path is going to be where we're going to be placing the document. And uh, we're going to resolve it again with current directory we're in and um, dot files and we're going to use the same file name but at the end of it let's actually append a pdf since this is where we're converting to okay cool and now what we want to do is create a new function uh, so we can call it convert um, to pdf and um, okay. convert to PDF. And it's actually going to be an async function uh, since we're going to be uh, having lots of awaits inside of it. So let's do that. Um, so first, what I want to do is create a kind of blank PDF. It doesn't have any pages, uh, but it's going to be a PDF document. And to do that, I can use PDF net uh, PDF doc that create and that kind of creates a PDF object. And then after that, I want to lock it down uh, so we can start writing to it. And then uh, let's actually go ahead and convert. So we can use PDF net convert to PDF. And inside of it, uh, we're going to give it a PDF doc that we want to kind of convert to and write to. And then the input path uh, that where we can find the original source code or uh, original source file, sorry. Uh, and now we can save the doc to the new path. 
So I can give it an output path. And here is a flag for the save option. Now I'm gonna save it with a linearized option true, which will allow us to stream the document uh, to the client. So instead of them having to download the whole file, we can stream it just like a video you're watching right now. So uh, the save option flags are actually available under this long uh, string, but as df doc, save options and elinearized. Okay, perfect. So this is the function that's gonna kind of take care of the conversion for us. And now we can actually execute it uh, with PDFnet. So we can run with the cleanup and after finishing kind of running this function, it will clean up any of the memory resources. And this returns a promise and um, let's give it a success callback and we can catch any of the errors uh, that PDFnet module uh, runs into. And inside of um, our catch, let's actually pass it a function in case of an error and close it here, great. In case of an error, it's pretty simple. We just wanna set the status code uh, 2500 internal server error, and then we can end uh, the request with an error uh, that we get. And in case of success, uh, what we wanna do is uh, we want to read the file uh, from the directory and send it back. So to read the file, let's actually require a package called fs. So I'll do require fs, and then here we can fs that read file and we'll give it a pass. So it's gonna be output path and then it takes in a callback function um, with first parameter being the error or the data that it read. And then inside of it, you know, let's say if error, then we want to set the status code again to 500 and end it um, with the error provided. And in case of a success, we actually want to kind of send back uh, the PDF that uh, we just read. Now to do that, the client actually needs to know what type of content it's gonna be getting so it can kind of take care of things on its own. So to do that, we can actually set a header on the response that we're going to be sending back. So I'll say set header and the name of the header that we want to set is the content type to say that we're going to be sending uh, back a PDF and the MIME type or the content type for PDF is actually called application slash PDF. And you can look those up uh, by Googling uh, for any other file types. And let's actually end it uh, with the data. Okay, great, so this looks good. Just a bit of a recap. So we required the PDFnet keyword uh, from PDFnet node. Uh, we require Express to actually uh, run this small Express server and handle those um, kind of endpoints being resolved. Uh, we need the path to kind of resolve and make sure it's working uh, on Linux and Windows servers. Uh, doesn't matter of the OS we're running the server on. And then we're using a file system uh, module to read the document from disk. So here, when the user hits uh, this endpoint, we extract the file name uh, that the user wants to convert, and then uh, we're creating input output path, converting to PDF, and then sending it back by setting the header of the content type and sending the data that we read from disk. Let's actually go ahead and see if this works. Okay, so navigate back to your browser and let's actually hit this path right here. Okay, great. And as you can see, it sent us back um, the PDF with the requested, and it actually wrote it to disk right here. Now, in the next video, what I'm gonna do is actually replace the quote number, uh, the customer name address line with the data that we're gonna receive from the user when they hit the generate invoice endpoint. So check back for the next video of us building out the next endpoint.